This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at pH curves. So the first pH curves we'll be looking at are those produced by adding a strong base to a strong acid and a strong acid to a strong base. So on the left, we have the pH curve for adding a strong base to a strong acid. So we start at a low pH, which is about pH 1, which is the pH of a strong acid. And as the base is added, the pH increases until we reach this point of inflection which is the really steep increase in pH. And then the curve reaches a maximum pH of approximately 14. The equivalence point occurs at pH 7. And this is the point at which stoichiometrically equivalent amounts of the acid and base have reacted and the solution contains only salt and water. On the right we have the pH curve for adding a strong acid to a strong base, which is almost the reverse of the one we see on the left. So we start at a high pH, which is pH 14, because we have a strong base. As the acid is added, the pH decreases until we reach the point of inflection, where we see a sharp decrease in the pH, and the curve ends at the pH of a strong acid, which is approximately pH 1. The equivalence point is also pH 7, and the reason for the equivalence point of pH 7 is that the salt produced from the reaction of a strong acid and a strong base is what we call a neutral salt, which has a pH of 7 at 298K. So next we look at pH curves involving weak acids and bases. So on the left we have the pH curve for adding a strong base to a weak acid, and we start at a pH of approximately 3, because this is the pH of a weak acid. We then see the pH increase as the base is added, and then we reach a part of the curve which is labelled as the buffer region. And this is where the solution contains appreciable amounts of the weak acid and its conjugate base, therefore the solution is acting as a buffer solution. So at this point the solution is able to resist a change in pH until we reach the point of inflection. We then see a steep increase in the pH until we reach pH 14, which is the pH of a strong base. Note the equivalence point occurs at a pH greater than 7. Once again this is where stoichiometrically equivalent amounts of acid and base have reacted, and the solution contains only salt and water. So because the salt produced from a strong base and a weak acid is known as a basic salt, the equivalence point occurs at a pH greater than 7. So moving on to the pH curve on the right, which is for adding a strong acid to a weak base. So we start at a pH of approximately 10, which is the pH of a weak base. And as the acid is added, the pH decreases. And then we see the buffer region, which is the point where the solution contains appreciable amounts of the weak base and the conjugate acid. So at this point the solution is able to resist the change in pH until we reach the point of inflection. And then we see a large decrease in the pH and the curve reaches a pH of 1, which is the pH of a strong acid. The equivalence point occurs at a pH of less than 7 because the salt produced from a strong acid and a weak base is known as an acidic salt. So next we look at how to determine the pKa of a weak acid and the pKb of a weak base from these pH curves. So on these pH curves we can see the point labelled the half equivalence point. And the half equivalence point is half of the volume of the equivalence point. So if the equivalence point occurs at a volume of 25 centimetres cubed, the half equivalence point will be at a volume of 12.5 centimetres cubed. And the half equivalence point is where half the weak acid or half the weak base has been neutralised. At this point the concentration of the weak acid or weak base is equal to the concentration of the conjugate base or of the conjugate acid. So at this point the Ka is equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution and if we take the negative log of both of those we end up with pH is equal to pKa and for a weak base the Kb is equal to the concentration of hydroxide ions in solution. So once again, if we take the negative log of both of those, we end up with the pOH is equal to the pKb. So to summarize, for a weak acid, at the half equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa, and for a weak base, at the half equivalence point, the pOH is equal to the pKb. So to determine this, you draw a line up from the half equivalence point to where it reaches the pH curve, and then draw the line across to the y-axis, and this is where the pH is equal to the pKa. And for a weak base, you do the same thing. 
You draw a line up from the half equivalence point to where it reaches the pH curve and then go across the y axis at which point the pOH is equal to the pKb. So to finish the video we'll look at the pH curves for weak acids and weak bases. So on the left we have a pH curve for adding a weak acid to a weak base and on the right we have the pH curve for adding a weak base to a weak acid. So for these two examples the equivalence point occurs at a pH of 7 but this will depend on the weak acid and the weak base. We don't really see a steep point of inflection, rather we see a gradual change in the pH as the weak acid is added to the weak base or the weak base is added to the weak acid.